Okay, here we go. Five principles of forgiveness. People really struggle with bitterness and offense and unforgiveness. Probably the biggest problem in the world. It's the number one reason people go to pastors for counseling. So let's start with the a video today, a five minute video of an amazing story about forgiveness. We end tonight with one of the most potent powers on earth. It can change lives in an instant. Everyone has it. It's the power to forgive. Watch it now in action in Steve Hartman's Assignment America. Thank you, Lord. In a small apartment building in North Minneapolis, a 59-year-old teacher's aide sings praise to God for no seemingly apparent reason. Indeed, if anyone was to have issues with the Lord, it would be Mary Johnson. For all you've done for me. He never had a chance. In February 1993, Mary's son, Loramian Bird, was shot to death during an argument at a party. He was 20 and Mary's only child. My son was gone. The killer was a 16-year-old kid named O'Shea Israel. I wanted justice. He was an animal. He deserved to be caged. And he was. Tried as an adult and sentenced to 25 and a half years, O'Shea served 17 before being recently released. He now lives back in the old neighborhood, close to Mary. This close. He lives next door. Next door. How a convicted murderer ended up living a door jam away from his victim's mother is a story not of horrible misfortune, as you might expect, but of remarkable mercy. A few years ago, Mary asked if she could meet O'Shea here at Minnesota's Stillwater State Prison. As a devout Christian, she felt compelled to see if there was some way, if somehow she could forgive her son's killer. What'd she say to you? I believe the first thing she said was, look, you don't know me, I don't know you, let's just start with right now. Then I was befuddled myself. O'Shea says they met regularly after that. When he got out, she introduced him to her landlord, who, with Mary's blessing, invited O'Shea to move into the building. Today, they don't just live close, they are close. Clearly, Mary was able to forgive. Unforgiveness is like cancer. It will eat you from the inside out. It's not about that other person. Me forgiving him does not diminish what he's done. Yes, he murdered my son, but the forgiveness is for me. It's for me. For O'Shea, it hasn't been that easy. I haven't totally forgiven myself yet. I'm learning how to forgive myself. And I'm still going towards, you know, trying to forgive myself and what it is I've done. To that end, O'Shea is now busy proving himself to himself. He works at a recycling plant by day and goes to college by night. He says he's determined to pay back Mary's clemency by contributing to society. In fact, he's already working on it, singing the praises of God and forgiveness at prisons, churches, to large audiences everywhere. Forgiveness is a powerful thing. Which explains why Mary can sing her praise of thanks to her audience of one. Steve Hartman, CBS News, Minneapolis. Okay, the consequences of having bitterness or offense or unforgiveness. Um, there's four of them. There's more than four. I'll just cover four of them. First of all, it disconnects you from God. Um, to not forgive someone, to be offended is a sin. And we need to forgive those people because Christ has forgiven us. So we still have a relationship with God, but uh, we're like we're unplugged from his power. Second, it puts us in a bad mood. I mean, it's hard to be happy and be bitter. Um, conflict comes in the front door. Happiness goes out the bo back door. It consumes you. I know it probably everyone's experienced this. You just think about it all the time, and it affects your mood. Um, it hurts your health. Negative emotions like bitterness and anger and stress, they make chemicals go in your body that make you age quicker, that can result in ulcers and illnesses and stuff. And fourth, it's damage your relationships. Life is about loving relationships, and that hurts relationships. Relationships are worth storing. Check out this verse in 1 Timothy 1.19. Keep faith and a good conscience. A good conscience means you're at peace with everyone, which some have rejected and suffered a shipwreck in regards 
to their faith. So their faith is just destroyed like a shipwreck. You're at sea, you're going to drown if you don't have a, a good conscience. So you want to be at peace with everyone. You don't have to love everyone. You don't have to have everyone as a roommate um, and be best friends, but you should be at peace with everyone. So let's look at five principles of forgiveness. Our second one is we are to forgive as Christ has forgiven us. Look at Colossians 3.13, bearing with one another. That means put up with each other's faults. Someone said people's faults were like taillights. You can see others, but not your own. We cut ourselves a lot of slack, but we don't cut other people's slack. So we need to be patient with everyone's got faults. Bearing with one another and forgiving each other, just as Christ Jesus has forgiven you. Jesus has forgiven you for everything you've done in the past, everything you're doing in the present, everything you're gonna do in the future, no matter what you've done, Jesus will forgive you unconditionally. That's why he died on the cross. We are expected to forgive other people. We forgive because we have been forgiven. If you don't want to forgive, maybe you don't have a real relationship with God and you really haven't been forgiven. Here's a, from American Idol. Um, this uh, Christian singer Mandisa is trying out for American Idol. Simon makes a comment about her being overweight and she gets embarrassed on national TV and it's, she's, it hurts her and she's bitter about it because she's forgiven. She forgives him. Here's a video clip. Mandisa didn't even hear the laughter as she was focused on the journey ahead. When we first met her in Chicago, Simon made some very tacky remarks about her weight. Do we have a big got, stage this year? She's got like a Frenchie. Forget Frenchie, she's like fraud. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This could get a little uncomfortable. Well. You didn't need a bigger stage, but you could have got a bigger chair. <laughs> Simon, a lot of people want me to say a lot of things to you. But this is what I want to say to you. Is that, yes, you hurt me. And I cried. And it was painful. It really was. But I want you to know that I've forgiven you. And that you don't need someone to apologize in order to forgive somebody. And I figured that if Jesus could die so that all of my wrongs could be forgiven, I can certainly extend that same grace to you. So I just wanted you to know. Amen. Mandisa, I'm humbled. Amen. Come here, give me a yeah. kiss. Come here. Well, good. Give me a kiss. I'm just Thank so you. appalling, aren't I? Hmm? You are, but... Well, we like you're each other now. Mandisa, yes. Aren't you glad I sit next to him? I can stomp him, stop him, and do it. What would I do with that? I don't one? feel one millimeter small, so I'll carry on <laughs> with what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, and I am sorry to tell you, you are going to have to go through this again because you're through to the next. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I love you so much. I love you. Thank you, really. Oh. I love you. Men. Okay, good job, Mandisa. Okay, she could have got revenge. It'd been easy for her to say something to make Simon look bad, but it was just like putting gasoline in the fire, but because of her forgiveness, she put water in the fire. Okay, we are to initiate and go first. We can't be pleasing to God if we aren't at peace with other people. I want to be right with God, and so even though it's against my feelings, against my nature, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take care of it. Okay, check out this verse in Matthew. It says, so if you are presenting a sacrifice at the, in the altar or in, at the altar in the temple, you suddenly remember that someone has something against you. Leave your sacrifice at the altar. Go and be reconciled to that person. Then come and offer your sacrifice to God. So your sacrifice could go, to God could just be your daily life, your service, your singing a song at church. One time at Campus Life, I set up this skit. This one girl is going to sing a Christian song and do a solo, and uh, it's going to stop her in the middle of it. Okay, so it's right in the middle of her song. I go, stop, stop. I go, Jamie, you can't sing this. You can't may have this offering to God because you're not at peace with Mary. Go apologize to Mary, then you can finish the song. And she... Everyone was really shocked that I did that. They didn't know it was a setup, but her and Mary apologized and she finished her song. One time we were having a small group Bible study and these two girls had tension against each other. And I said, you know, it's no point in you girls being here if you're not at peace with each other. Um, go in the, in the other room here and work things out. Don't come out of that room until you're at peace with each other. So we need to initiate and go first, even though the, the other person might be more wrong. Um, never take revenge. God will take care of it. Mandisa could have got revenge really easy. Check out this verse, Romans 12, 18 through 21. As far as it is possible, as it depends on you, 
Live at peace with everyone, everybody, everybody. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it's mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. Okay, first of all, don't take revenge. And a lot of people take revenge through the silent treatment, um, through gossip, um, through ignoring people, um, subtle things like that. Don't take revenge. Be, do kind to them. Be at peace with everyone. Well, this sure needed today with all the, the tension and stuff. And let, if you want to get someone back, let God do it. He can take care of it better than you. You know, one of the nine, uh, we have a, the Ten Commandments in the Bible. Uh, there's a satanic Bible. And one of the nine satanic statements, they don't have Ten Commandments. They have nine satanic statements. It is not to forgive, but to take revenge. Satan wants people to take revenge. So we don't want to obey but the Satan, but we want to obey God and not take revenge. Okay, fifth and final point, do an act of kindness. I'm going to get what it says in Romans. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing so, you'll heat burning coals on his head. Do not overcome, be overcome by, do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And uh, so if someone is mean to you, um, forgive them and do acts of kindness. It might take a long time. It may take a year, but you'll eventually wear them down. Um, I had a teacher, uh, assistant wrestling coach. He was an auto shop teacher when Hermes used to have auto shop. His first year in teaching, um, someone put a really dirty note on his car, um, cutting him down, cutting his wife down, saying really inappropriate things and stuff. And it was towards the end of the school year. And he knew it was, even though it wasn't signed. And he showed me he was pretty upset about it. I said, well, Scott, you know, you got to forgive him and you got to do act of kindness, you know. So have your wife make him some cookies. So the next day at school, the teacher brought some cookies and gave him the guy. Hey, my wife made you these cookies. It's, it's been a rough year, but let's end on a good note. So he did an act of kindness. So um, here are some action steps, okay. First of all, make a list of anyone you might, might have anything against you. If you're 1% wrong, apologize for your 1%. Don't worry about their 99. Let God take care of it. You just do your job. Um, one time I, uh, I had this, uh, when I learned this, when I was 28 years old, I heard this in a seminar. And there was a girl I dated for about three weeks in high school. And I was uh, broke up with her. I wasn't very honest with her. And I tried to uh, just ignore her. And I wasn't very friendly towards her. And I, I should have been friendly towards her and stuff. And so, you know, I thought, you know, I, I really did a, a poor job of uh, offending her. And so 10 years later, I called up and got her phone number. She was in California. I was in Portland. I said, hey, I just, uh, you remember me? I just apologize for the way I treated you and not being your friend and the way I broke up with you and stuff. And she didn't think it was a big deal, but it cleared my conscience. And uh, this FCA class, we used to have uh, three teachers, a youth pastor and a farmer, and I would do it twice a week. Well, the farmer would have to counsel a lot because stuff would come up, which I understand on the farm and stuff. And then the last year, I just kind of thought, you know, I, it's just hard to find a substitute towards the last minute. I, it's just easier if I do it myself. So, you know, I didn't say anything to him and it was about November and I thought, you know, I, maybe he's offended that I didn't contact him or, or didn't show appreciation to him. So I, I called him and said, Hey, I want to apologize for, you know, uh, I appreciate what you did for the FCA class teaching and giving your time. And, you know, I should have contacted you and told you, you know, I really didn't need you to teach this year and stuff. And he really appreciated that. He wasn't offended, but um, sometimes we offend people. Um, we don't do anything. We just ignore people by accident and we need to be sensitive to that. Ask God, for forgiveness and power. You can't do it on your own. You need the power of God to forgive people. It's one of the hardest things to do. It's so consuming and you need to rely on God by power. You can't do it on your own. Third, go and make it right now. Um, pick the right time, but uh, man, get it done as soon as possible. Don't expect results instantly. It takes time. If the person is not a Christian, they're probably not going to forgive you because they haven't been forgiven. And they don't have the power to do that. But like there's people I've offended and it took a year of being nice to them and saying hi to them and asking them to forgive me and stuff. And eventually you just kind of wear it out and you just have to move on um, and do an act of kindness. Just don't forgive them. Just do an act of kindness. You don't have to be their best friend. You don't have to have hang out with them all the time, but you need to be at, at peace with everybody. So quick review and do um, the consequences. Can, consequences of unforgiveness are disconnected from God, a bad mood, it hurts your health, and it damages relationships. Uh, we are to forgive as Christ has forgiven us. If we're 1% wrong, apologize for your 1%. Don't worry about their 99. We are to initiate. Uh, we are to go first. Um, never take revenge. Let God do it. And do an act of kindness. Go the extra mile. Kawhi Leonard of the San Antonio Spurs is a, one of the best players in the NBA. 
and he had an injury and some players made a comment that the injury was taking too long to heal and he should tough it out and get on the court. Well, that made him bitter and he got offended and he didn't come back the whole season and he demanded a trade. He said, I'm not coming back to San Antonio. Seriously, guy's making millions of dollars as an all-star and he's offended by a little thing like that. So a lot of times on teams, you're going to, you're going to have offense. 80% of people leave their jobs because they can't get along with other people. And because uh, they get offended and they can't forgive and they can't work things out and stuff. And so this is a huge thing that you need to do in your own life, but you need to counsel other people and share this lesson with other people. So I encourage you guys um, to, man, forgive people. Your life is too short. Your life is too important and your calling is too great to be bitter. I mean, you can't, you don't want to waste your life being disconnected with God, having drama. You don't want to go through high school having negative emotions, having drama and stuff, man. Clear it up and be at peace with other people and be a peacemaker. This is going to take a lifetime to apply. Um, you're going to have to review it and work on it. It's going to be hard, but, but it works.